Hello there, this is Kitsune Zeta, and this is going to be episode 0 for my let's play of Whiplash, or Fatal Racing as you guys over in Europe know it. We're not going to cover too terribly much in this, it's, it's, this is going to mostly be a primer video, but I am going to cover a few things that are going to be of interest. Including how to set up the sound on this. Now I'm running this in DOS box. And first off, if you haven't installed it, you're just going to want to go to your, your disk drive, which I've got as, as E drive because old school like that. And then you're going to want to, and then you're going to want to run install that back. Now, since I already have an install, I'm gonna go to the Whiplash folder, or if you or if you're you got the European version, this will be the Fatal Racing folder, which I believe defaults to Fatal. And and again, you're gonna run the install.bat file. Now, I've got the uh, DOSBox configuration open right now, so I know what my sound settings are. But there's a key reason I'm, I'm bringing this up now. And that's because until about uh, a week ago, actually, well, about a few days before in, in Ancient DOS games covered this game, um, hold on. I was completely unaware that this game had uh, CD audio. Now, since I have the since I have the DOSBox configuration up, I can just it's skip all detecting. But usually on physical hardware, this tends to work. Anyways, I've got I've got DOSBox configured to emulate a Sound Blaster 16, Sound Blaster 20, IRQ7, DMA1. And make sure you do the sound test. And that's on the deck. Now this is the thing. There's debate. Between, there are some people that, that swear by the uh, standard MIDI based soundtrack, and there are others that actually prefer the uh, CD audio. This is where you pick which one you're going to use. Now. For those of you that are, are, that are run this game using a CD image, if you've got your uh, CD image set up as an ISO, you're not going to get compact disc audio. It's not going to happen. You're going to want to have it, it set up as a QBIN file pair. Yeah. And anyways, if you select uh, it's compact disc audio, you'll get CD audio which is usually better sounding overall but those of us that are much more used to the MIDI audio are probably just going to want to use the same music device as they set up for the sound. Now for this, uh, for, this for these videos I'm actually going to use the compact disc audio and again, make sure you do the sound test because this will tell you if you're going to be able to do it or not. And again, and with that you can hit exit. Exit is all set up, save configuration. And that always comes up at the end of the bat file. But that, let's actually start getting into the game. Now, if you're run, if you've got Fatal Racing, the European release, you're actually going to want to type it Fatal. But we're using the US version, so it's Whiplash. Now, I've done, I have done one thing to the. Uh, I've done a couple things to this installation actually. You've seen one. You've seen one right now. But, 
I have done a few, th a couple things. And let's see, I'm trying to remember what they are offhand. But yeah, I've changed a few of the strings, or a few of the text strings around. For instance, the drift coin levels. Now, the 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 difficulty. All the strings are actually stored in well, almost all of the text strings are actually stored in three files. Well, three files per here language, and those can be located under the in fat data folder. A lot of the a lot of the strings are there. This, this string, this in particular, this is the most accurate name for this. In the, in the European version, this was called false starts. In the, in, in Whiplash, it's, it's called engine damage. Really, it's just ignition failures in, it's, or start failures, really. Um, let's see. Immediately. Oh yeah. One thing I did to my installation. Normally, when you enter with the whiplash.bat command, it's going to bring up a screen in in to prompt you for getting the registration info. You can just edit that out of the batch file. So, what is whiplash? Well. It's a old racing game. And I'm actually just gonna go ahead and switch over to time trial and pick one of the tracks. The Grand Boy. This seems like a good thing. Um, well, before I start, absolutely want a chance to control the round. So, basically, it's an arcade. It's an arcade -y, y racing game. Go! And you basically want to, just like any other racing game, go around the track as fast as you can, trying to finish first, and trying not to get destroyed. Now, if you're playing your own copy, you'll probably notice there's a couple of words that are different. For instance, up top you can see what it says lap on an unmodified installation that will be time instead and yeah, I've changed a few of the text strings around. I actually did not know you could change those until literally the day that I'm recording this. Anyways, it, the time trial game type gives you, lap record is gives you five laps to set the best time that you can with the card that you have. And there are no computer opponents, although there can be human, there can be a second human opponent. This game does support split screen multiplayer. And actually, the patched version of this game, that is the well. But I'm gonna call it Fatal Racing 2.0. Supports a uh, network multiplayer, both serial modem, serial cable modem, and IPX network. And the IPX network actually supports 16 players. And the lap record is space! Yeah, I wouldn't expect those lap records to stand. Uh, so controls are fairly simple. I'm actually using keyboard controls, although Gemini, Ge uh, Gemini, the guy behind Ancient DOS games, swears by analog controls. I've uh, done just fine with keyboard. Um, basically, you've got accelerate, brake, Left, right. 
down shift, up shift, and those are basically your controls. Oh, there's also a couple hotkeys while I'm thinking about them. You've got an F3 and F4 which change your view. There are actually five view options, although you know, went in an eight car race, or any car, any race that's not 16, the full 16 car grid. One of them's not available. So you've got your standard in, in view, you've got your long distance chase, you've got rear view, you've got the mirror, and you've got close chase, and then in one of those, in between one of those, you can also it, you have the option for team view, which would basically put a window where that rear view mirror is now that shows your you know, team in a third person view. Now you may have noticed that I'm taking damage. There's a small little you know, damage indicator next to my spit uh, tachometer there. And I'm actually starting to have a, a lower top speed. Now there's an easy way to fix this. It's called pit. So you're gonna wanna slow down. Pit work! Okay, you're done! Step on it! And then go back and then once the pit is done, you get back into it and keep going. Congratulations! You're a winner! Race over! Yeah, that, that record's definitely gonna get beaten. So, let's talk options. Now, there are quite a few options. There's a bunch of graphical details in some of those options. One of which I'm, I forgot to do. I'm making it an SVGA, because I actually, it actually looks better in SVGA. It can be slightly a slower on period hardware, but it's a trade-off I'm willing to accept. Now, if you're running the unpatched Fatal Racing game, you don't have perspective correction. I suggest go, going hunt down the e version 2.0 update. Anyways, the rest of these settings basically affect how the game I look, except for a you know, panel and to a degree look ahead. Now, panel restricted, which is the default for versus mode and is the only option for the 3DFX version. Basically simplifies the, the, the uh, panel to the HUD a bit and I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like. Go! Yeah, you can see the HUD is a bit simplified. And you can actually since I'm here, I might as well use this to demonstrate what the various things do. Perspective correction, you might be noticing some textures kind of switching. That's all it does. It's, it can say they have been performance, but it's not enough that it's necessary. And names will just pop up the names above. You have cars, buildings, actually controls the signs as well, which is which you're going to want to leave off. Glass walls, I don't think there's any on this course, but this would make them opaque. Horizon. Yeah, I have to switch to the third person view. Here we go. The uh, car textures, whether or not the cars are textured or just colored blobs. Honestly, look, you're going to want to keep most of these texture options on. Although, okay, you're you really going to want to keep the building textures on. So if you really want that virtual, virtual racing feel, you can, you know, play that. Try to put some mostly torn between, I, I'm not actually just going to keep all these on. And I actually don't remember what look it does, but I'm really going to restrict it, so. Anyways, that's all I wanted to show here. 
Anyways, uh, miscellaneous. So you can set your views here. I suggest not doing it here though, because there is a possibility that the game can lock up in DOS box here. Uh, the speedometer, you can set it between kilometers per hour and miles per hour. The speeds do not line up correctly though. For whatever reason, the, the scales are different. The speed scales are actually different. 180 miles per hour is not the correct. It's not the corresponding value in kilometers per hour. Uh, replay recording usually too worthwhile to keep it on. Memory, if you're using this on actual DOS hardware, you might have to worry about this, but. If you're running this in DOS box, you might as well just leave it at, at 8 megabytes. And engine engine damage, false starts, ignition failures, whatever and you decide to mod this name to. This makes it just so that the more damaged your car is, the more likely it is, is that when you go to start the engine, it actually won't start. Sound, these are actually the default settings. Everything you see here is default settings. So you can fine tune the, the individual individual volume levels. Now speech covers both the announcer and teammate chat. So you're gonna want to be careful with that. And names. This is basically where you can enter your name. And you can also enter in, in names for all of the AI drivers. So if you don't like a name that it's given here, note that it will automatically replace if any human, any, it will automatically replace any AI drivers that correspond to a human slot with the human in its name. But if you don't like a given, if you don't like a given uh, driver's name, for instance, Marvin, we're going to replace Marvin with Gemini. And that's how simple it is. You can do that for all these, and I will have to do all, all those names, swap all these names out with something else before the first uh, actual race. Now, there is one other thing, and I'll dedicate a few videos to these, but there are actually quote-unquote cheat names. For instance, there's Remove. Whenever you enter a cheat name, it will actually replace your name with something else. Note that it has to be done as the player name. For instance, if I were to type Remove as that, as that it, it would stick. So. Incidentally, that the one and cheat that I did in, into there undoes all active cheats except for a few select ones. So I'm gonna go over the uh, tracks in the videos that that you know, uh, the races take place on. I'm also gonna do a proper time trial of uh, commentary on each of those. However. I figured now's a good time to go over the eight cars. Lotto Ariel Suete 270ZX is a good all-rounder with an average maximum speed and a good acceleration. Ariel are the only surviving French major car manufacturer in the world. Their reputation is for all-round performance cars. So this is a good beginner's car, and you you saw how, how well it handled. It's not the strongest, but it's also not the worst. De Silva's 511 GTI has the best acceleration on the grid. Its slightly disappointing top speed and light chassis make it a tactical choice. The Italians are the world leader in design and construction techniques, and are the largest car manufacturer in Europe. So. Disappointing top speed is an understatement. This is by far the slowest car in the game. It also doesn't have much mass, which means it's liable. It's it tends to get smacked around by the other cars. 
It does have decent acceleration and braking, although one of those two actually doesn't matter. The errant V8 GT is fast and reliable, renowned for its ability to power slide. Pulse Engineering pay attention to quality and detail, which makes this English car a very expensive affair. So this is another good and, and car for the newbies. It's because it's generally balanced all around. It does tend to power slide, but it, again, it's middle of the line. Global Celerity Mark II is a fast, heavy, durable car that has a slow acceleration. The Global logo can be found on 40% of the cars sold in the world today. So the U.S. constructors can truly be said to be Global. So Global is one of the two powerhouses in the game. They've got the second highest top speed. They've got decent enough acceleration. They've got the most durability of any of the eight cars. Uh, braking, again, is a little less than desirable, but doesn't really matter. And turning and grip are okay. The Ninjato's strength is in its road grip, but this is offset by its low acceleration and top speed. Million Plus have been effective at creating thoroughbred performance cars throughout Japan. So you might have noticed by now the music has cut out, and that's because it doesn't loop. For whatever reason, the menu music doesn't actually keep looping, and I honestly don't know why. It really doesn't matter. Anyways, Million Plus, they don't really have much in terms of anything and they're, they've got better low acceleration, low top speed, braking is only marginally better than their acceleration, turning, eh. They've got the best grip though. They've also, they are also the least durable cars in the game. But they've got a decent amount of mass to toss behind and in their, their body. That said, million plus uh, drivers tend to team kill. It is something you'll probably notice happens to a million and plus drivers more than any other car. Mission's Spectre Turbo SE has a reasonable top speed and the best anti-lock braking system in the field. Mission was formed back in the 1950s and has grown more than twice its size in the last two years. So Mission has got decent acceleration, decent brakes, decent turning, good grip. Their only shortfalls are the top speed, durability, and mass. Still, if you can not get hit, that they're a decent choice. The KLR 330's low traction makes this a firm winner's favorite. Zizin is the amalgamation of six of Japan's most respected constructors, and the KLR 330 is their flagship. So I hope you've noticed the complete lack of grip. These cars are infamously difficult to control. That said, they're decently durable and can turn. And so they've got that going for them. The Merker GT is the fastest car on the grid. It's heavy and very durable, but has slow acceleration and poor braking. This German company has some of the best engineers in the world working on their cars and are hotly favored for constructor of the year. So, these, uh, this is the other powerhouse, uh, the Mercury GT. You might not, you might be wondering, why am I saying this is a powerhouse? This has the worst acceleration in out of all of them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, reveal something that's going to make a lot of you, you guys a little annoyed. The acceleration stat doesn't mean a dang thing to the computers. They've got, this car has the t uh, highest top speed and the most mass of any car. 
and they have the second highest durability rating. Their garbage, at, their brakes are reported garbage, though that doesn't matter. Turning is less than ideal, and grip is F. But still, you know, the Reese wagons and the in global cars tend to be in, in the top five. Anyways, main of the options. You've got one player, two player, which I've, I've again changed the text to be two player local. Oh, sorry. sorry. Two player local. You've got network, serial link, and modem for multiplayer options. Now, when you do one of these, you do get the option to set the text, set a hotkey text match messages to the F5 through F8 keys. We're never going to see them because we're not going to do a network game ever. So, game types. Now, in time travel, your only option is, well, humans. But in the other types, you can select between a two car head to head in an eight car race or a full grid of 16 cars. All the races that I'm going to be doing are going to be full 16 car races. Because that's honestly the, honestly the way that this game feels like it was meant to be played. However, if you're aiming to unlock stuff from winning championships, you can go with the option of doing a head to head race, head to head two player split screen race, and just abusing that for the unlocks. Because there are stuff to be unlocked in this game. Anyways, difficulty. Well, game types. You've got single race, championship, which brings you through all eight cups of all eight races of the cup. And then time trial, which as I've said earlier, is five laps on a single track. Difficulty. Now I've changed some of these, these names around. This up here, what I've called what I call warm-up. And by all rights, it really is a warm-up. In the actual release of the game, this is called girly difficulty. Yeah. It's a warm-up. And trivial used to be called easy. But I find it so easy that, well, there. This used to be medium. This used to be tricky. This is still hard. And this was, is what was called impossible. I opted just to call it lunatic. You can guess that's my fandom from that. There is actually one extra decoy level above it. But we'll get to that later. Not in this video, but in a much later video. Suffice to say, I don't. I actually prefer playing on that extra difficulty level as opposed to impossible, or lunatic, as I'm gonna call it. Now, collision damage level. This is basically the damage scaling for. Uh, uh, this is basically just damage scaling of the game. It's. It more or less what it does. Just like with the coil level, there is one additional option, but those two, that extra option for damage level and the extra option for the coil level are linked. So if you have it set on one of them, it's, it's automatically set for the other. Now difficulty. This does a few things. It mostly, it most obviously affects it most obviously affects uh, most obviously affects the uh, race the length. The Big Dipper. Fast reflexes and a stomach for G's are an essential quality for any driver attempting Pulse's roller coaster of a circuit. Jello heads need not apply. So you're going to notice that the laps say three laps. So I'm going to go down to game type and select if, if I'm calling. I'm going to put it up to in maximum. The Big Dipper. 
Fast reflexes and a stomach for G's are an essential quality for any driver attempting Pulse's roller coaster of a circuit. Cello heads need not apply. 15 laps. This is the most significant dif difference in difficulty levels. Now, the other thing that it does is it affects the, the, the enemy AI, the, the AI of the other racers. And that's going to be a... It's hard to describe exactly what it does, but... Basically, on hard, on higher difficulty levels, the AI will get more aggressive. They also uh, tend to push their car further, which means they'll actually be driving closer to their, their uh, maximum speed. Anyways, the other options in here are uh, replays, where you can in view the last, where you can actually show. Hello, back. Or you can actually see the uh, replay of the last race shown, and you can save save your replay. You can load save replays. There's also some uh, editing that you can do. And you've also got lap records, which will show you the uh, fastest times for all the tracks in the game. And then there's exit the DOS, which I should exit. So with that in mind, we're gonna do a uh, the big dipper. I'm gonna do a quick race on on the first course of the game on Warlock. So this is gonna be a two lap race. Just 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 give you guys a taste of what's coming. Drivers ready! Engines ready! Go! Yeah, you know, since I am in a. Uh, this, yeah, you can see now that I have the uh, team duo. Now, a word of. Uh, notice about the. Uh, word about the uh, two views that. about mirror and team view. They do tend to slow the game down just a bit. There's a little bit of lag that you can get with those. And you can also see some flickering colors. Yeah! Give it some! You can also see what the team ahead and behind them do now. Basically distance distance in time to the car ahead and car behind. The F5 to F8 keys, when you have a teammate, will issue commands, will issue requests to this teammate, so whether or not they follow them. Roger that, I've got the line, I'm going for it. It is basically... And the lap record is It's basically... Is it's basically Final lap, keep it tight! It's basically a dice roll, whether or not the AI will follow your, your suggestions or not. Roger, slowing down, I'll do my best. Negative. I'm slowing up. Gonna stop a few of these suckers. Uh, negative. I'm slowing up. Gonna stop a few of these suckers. You know, there are, like, there are a total of eight different messages that your, you know, your partner can send you. Four of those correspond to the orders that you can, to the requests you can send to them. The ones, the ones you should can't be wary of. Mobile eight to car seven. I'm going for the line. Uh, well, uh, they will tell you if they turn around and start uh, going backwards. They'll tell you if they're going to hit. And the lap record is space! Congratulations, you're a winner! Race over! They'll also warn you if they're uh, getting damaged. So, since I'm here, I'm going to give a brief rundown on how scoring works. If you have the fast lap in a race, 
you get one point automatically. If you manage to destroy to cause a fatality, that is, you manage to wreck another car, you get one point for that. In addition, you get in for placing, you get at the points that you see on the screen right now. Except for first place, where I actually have an additional point from the, the fast lap, so you get 25 points for first place, and the rest of these points as shown. So yeah, that's gonna be a good, that should be a good intro video. I'm gonna link in the Ancient DOS games episode for this, this game in the description. So if you want to see that video, you can find it there. And really, in, in general, Gemini does a good job of covering the in DOS games on Ancient DOS games. that note I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Next time we'll actually get started in a championship. And I'm actually going to do it on Lunatic. And hide and damage scale. Which actually brings me to another thing. When you're in a championship, instead of being able to select a track, you get the option to save you get the option to save or load in a championship in progress. And also after the first course Global of a, Polarity Mark II is a fast after the first course of a uh, championship, you can't change your car. Anyways, on that note, and that'll be all for today, for this video. Next time, Grand Royale 10 lap race.